Yo, so Machine 2.4.6 is the newest update to the Native Instruments Machine platform, all right? And there are a lot of cool new features inside of this new update that are going to help you and assist you to create better music using the Machine platform. All right, but unfortunately, I've been watching some update videos just about you know what is inside of this new 2.4.6 update and they've just been like going on and on and on about all the little bullshit features that no one really cares about they're not really talking about the specific details in this new update that are going to help you to create better music all right so that's what i'm going to do instead today all right i'm going to provide you a look inside of 2.4.6 to show you the most important parts about this update that are going to help you to create better music using this machine software and this machine platform. Just just the important stuff, all right? So, my name is Rob, if you don't already know, and I've got a unique opportunity for you to get a video lesson where I show you, basically from start to finish, my entire process of creating sample-based beats on machine. All right, so if you're a hip-hop head and you wanna understand what it takes to sample like guys like Jay Dilla or Pete Rock, I've got a free video series. It's about a 20 minute video lesson that walks you through in three steps. How to chop samples, how to chop a drum break, flip it into a hard hitting drum groove, how to then find a sample, chop it up and flip it over that drum groove to make a smooth sounding melody. And third, how to add supporting instrumentation to build up the beat beyond just the basics, okay? So get that free video lesson by clicking the link in the description. For now, we're gonna jump on over to Machine and I'm gonna show you this new 2.4.6 update and uh, talk about the most important aspects of this that are gonna help you create better music. So let's jump on over there and get to it. All right, all right, so let's jump into it and take a look at the most important features inside of Machine 2.4.6. First and foremost, the most important feature that I've noticed in 2.4.6 is the live slicing feature. Okay, essentially what this allows you to do is load up a sample and put it on an individual pad. All right, if I could show you the hardware right now, this would be on sound slot one. And basically, once you're engaged in manual mode, the sample is going to start blinking. Once you press that pad and the sample starts to play, you can basically essentially chop the samples by pressing the next button and it, essentially putting that chop on a different pad all the way down and say you might have eight different samples. You keep pressing the next pad at the point that the sample is playing that you want to chop the sample and it puts it on a different pad for you. Okay, so you don't have to manually dive in there and duplicate in and edit different sample slices. You can do it very quickly using this sample slicing mode, all right? This is the thing that everybody's been talking about. It's more intuitive um, and it makes a lot more sense, okay? This is a very, very unique feature. It's probably one of my favorite features to add, all right? In theory, it'll save you a bunch of steps from your workflow because instead of having to chop things manually, like I said, 10 different times and adjusting the start and end points, you can quickly get your sample chops where you want them to be, all right? Now, I haven't put in the time to figure this all out, but if you would, if, if, if this sounds interesting to you and you're more of a sample-based producer, just leave me a comment below and let me know if it sounds interesting to you and I can look more into this feature and make a video for you detailing how I'd use it inside of my workflow and maybe make a beat using this, this technique, okay? The next element of Machine 2.4.6 that I like is the same links are independent of the pattern lengths, all right? So essentially what this allows you to do is this is useful for the arrangement portion in Machine, all right? So you can construct your scene, so this is scene one, I can construct a, pa a scene that is independent of the pattern length. Before, in Machine 2.4 or Machine 2.0 version, uh, the longest pattern that you had within the scene set the length of the, of the scene, all right? So if you had an eight bar loop, um, inside of this scene, the pattern or the scene, ex excuse me, if you had an 8-bar pattern within the, the scene, the scene automatically took on the 8 bars, all right? You couldn't have a 4-bar scene. And this allows you, this little feature, essentially you just grab this by the edge and sort of drag it to where you want it, and you can sort of create a scene length that's independent of your longest pattern. So the longest pattern in here is 4 bars. I can create a scene length of however long or short that I want it to be. Right? This is going to be useful in the arrangement stage. 
The next functionality that I see that is very cool in here is the loop functionality. The loop functionality has basically enabled you to loop individual scenes or portions of a scene by selecting and, and pressing, look up here, this is this little gray highlighted area. You can drag and select the loop function to wherever you want this to be looped and engage this loop button at the top next to the record button and essentially play this loop over and over again instead of having to play the entire pattern. All right, and this is very useful in the arrangement stage and in the mixing stage, I guess, um, and even using automation. If you really want to hone in on one section of a pattern and you don't want it to have to, you know, for example, if I just wanted to utilize this section of this piano, I really wanted to make sure that this volume level was correct, or if I wanted to add some automation to get it dialed in correctly, I wouldn't have to play this entire pattern four bars over and over again and only dial in this last little one bar. I could just loop this individual portion of this pattern to dial in on the uh, the automation or whatever I was putting in there to focus on that just one bar okay it'd be really useful in that that scenario okay the the next thing that I want to mention is the default settings for internal effects okay and this is very useful for example basically what this allows you to do is save default settings for an effect so that every time that you open up that effect it recalls whatever settings that you have alright so say for example I have a drum group alright so this is my drum group right here if I have a standard, say, reverb setting that I utilize on the majority of my drum groups that I like to recall every single time, all right? I know that, that I use this setting. It's subtle enough to sound good on my drum groups. So instead of having to dial this in over and over and over again, having to, you know, figure out the exact settings that I had before, I can set this as the default by right-clicking or control-clicking on a Mac and saving as default and you can save essentially a preset setting for this reverb so that you can recall it later in the future. That's going to be really useful. It's going to save you time in your workflow. You can utilize these on more creative effects, like I've utilized this on a reverb or on a chorus before. So, for example, if you're using this on a chorus, you might set your, uh, I don't know, your, your, your chorus, save that as the default setting and be able to recall it every single time. Um, you know, that might be useful if you if you use the same chorus setting on a synthesizer or something like that. So that's uh, extremely useful as well. The next piece of functionality that I want to talk about is the new export functionality. Okay, so likely you have experienced the problem where you have gone to export your machine project from machine and maybe try to get into a WAV file that you could play it on a, you know, on your phone or in your car or something like that. All right, but... Um, once you went to export it, maybe it only exported a small portion or a loop instead of the whole entire project. I, I know I've ran into that problem a ton of different times. Machinist or Native Instruments rather has sort of solved this problem by allowing you to export a range. Okay, so you can select all under your master output, and that's going to make sure that you export all portions of this this project. Um, the next aspect is exporting to AIFF files. AIFF is just an Apple designated file format. It's uncompressed and lossless, so it's similar to WAVE. Um, it's going to be useful for you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what sort of functionality that's going to add to your workflow, but it's something that could potentially be useful for you. All right. So this brings me to the point. Just let me be know below if you'd like me to teach more about this update. I am willing to bet that the most interesting aspect for you is going to be the um, the live chopping, the live sampling element that we talked about. So if you want to, to see me sort of break down this functionality and show you the best ways to use this so that you can make better beats, let me know in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're on the blog, jump on over to YouTube and let me know in the comments and I'll make a specific tutorial covering that element in detail but I need to know that you'll find it useful first all right so that live sampling feature sounds neat to me um, also if you want to learn more about the looping functionality and how I'd utilize that um, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll create something around that all right so for now though if you want to understand the process of sampling on machine I've got something quickly that I want to tell you about if you're a sample based producer 
that wants to make sure that you're doing everything that you can within your realm of possibilities to get better at sampling on machine and to create better sounding sample based beats using machine to get the most out of this platform that I've got something very very interesting for you I want to teach you my sampling formula okay the same type of formula that your favorite producers like Dilla and Pete Rock and DJ Premier are using okay essentially what I'm gonna show you is three simple steps I'm gonna break down sampling for you in three steps I'm gonna show you first how to chop a drum break, flip a drum break into a hard-hitting drum groove, all right? That's going to serve as the foundation for your beats, hard-hitting break beat. The second thing I'm going to show you how to do is pick a sample to go over top of that break, chop it up, and smoothly flip it into a unique-sounding original melody using your machine, all right? The third thing I'm going to show you how to do once you have your drums and your sample grooving properly, I'm going to show you how to build your beat even further using supportive instrumentation like synthesizers, or a piano or something like that to add more to your music okay I'm gonna show you that in a video lesson it's called um, essentially let, let me show it to you right here rather than keeping talking about it I will show you um, essentially this video lesson details how to sample like Jay Dilla on machine in three simple steps all right, I'm not going to break down his actual formula and get into detail. Obviously, that would take forever. However, what I'm going to do is going to give you the same framework that he and producers like him utilize to make sample-based beats, a framework that you can then take and create your own style around and build your own you know, style of music. All right, So this is essentially showing you the formula. All you have to do in order to get this is click the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. It's going to take you to this page where you can click this button, enter your name and email address, and get access to this free video lesson. It's about 20 or so minutes long, and it's going to break down all three of those steps that I showed you and reveal the process. So you're going to sign up for this. You're going to, your mind is going to unlock to sampling, and I'm going to share you share with you rather a blueprint that is going to break down things in a simple way that's going to be easy for you to understand so that you can easily sit down and choose and chop and flip samples creatively with machine without even having to think about what to do next. All right. Again, my name is Rob. I am the creator of a blog called hiphoprally.com. Click below if you want to see more in detail about this uh, 2.4.6 update. I've got a blog article down there that you can read more about. Um, I can also show you uh, a little bit more information about this 2.4.6, especially this live sample chopping update. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you would find valuable, all right? I appreciate you watching this video. Click subscribe to continue to get more free, great information about Machine, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.